if your kids are obsessed with Poppet toys, and I know they probably are because they're all the rage, I have a video filled with lots of ways that you can use them in learning activities. So whether you're a mom, a parent, a teacher, or even a babysitter, you're gonna find some great ideas in this video. Hey, hey you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. I showed you some fidgets, and in that fidget video, I showed you the poppets, and those poppets are highly popular. In fact, I'm pretty much addicted to them too. So I wanna show you some ideas that I had and I have found around the internet that would be great to use the poppets with learning. So we're combining two things here to make both the kid happy and the parent happy. Let's get on to some ideas for poppets. If you are a parent that has been living under a rock or a teacher or a grandparent, you might not know what these poppet things are, but they are all the rage with kids right now, which makes it a great reason to use them in your learning activities and when you play with your kids. I wanted to show you some ways on how to do that. They come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. I think this is the first one we had, which is the name brand one, I believe. And basically there's these little bubbles on here that you push in and then push back on the other side. They were designed to be a fidget sensory toy kind of thing and they exploded and have become games. But I'm a big advocate of using things kids like when you're doing learning activities with them so that you can capture their interest. So we have some plain ones here. So that's one style. All of these I'm going to put down below are all the ones I can find. I'm going to put down below in my Amazon store so you can check them out and see what they're all about. Sometimes you can even find them at the dollar store now. I mean, they are really everywhere. So here's one that's in a square shape. We have some in different colors, unicorn. Actually, you can't see them, but there's little letters printed on them, which is fun too. But I have a lot of other options to show you. They even make them in like keychain form. So this is a great one. It's from um, Fat Brain Toys, which is a dimple is what they call theirs and then they had this new one that I just got recently. The thing with fat brain toys is that theirs are made from food grade silicone so it's a really nice um, safe option especially if you have an oral child. Oral meaning they put things in their mouth. This is one that I have recently picked up and I really liked. I actually showed it in a video about sensory toys that I'm loving right now and that has a lot of ideas and fidgets. I'm going to put that up in the corner if I can find that but I like this one because it's 10 by 10 and so you can do a lot of math activities with it. I first want to tell you how this benefits your child just from the sensory standpoint, in case you didn't know that already. One, it's finger manipulation by pushing in the buttons. And so you have a really good sense of working on those fingers and manipulating the buttons. You have visual scanning. So if you're popping these going left to right, it's a really nice visual scanning in a line, which also leads into reading skills later. You can also add in some other activities like one-to-one -one correspondence. So I have some pom-poms here and by taking this, this out and putting them in here you have some one-to-one -one correspondence and taking them in you can use um little bits of balls of play-doh you can use little pebbles or something of that nature something small enough to fit inside of here i just had the pom-poms on hand so i always recommend those and you can get these at dollar tree too which is really great you can put several of them in your hand and so then you're using hand manipulation so you're moving them to your fingertips and then you have the fine motor with the pincer graphs putting them in so you're doing a lot of hand work and this hand work is great for early learners meaning um your late toddler, early preschooler age because they are working on developing those small fine motor muscles in their hand, which prepares them for writing later. It's also good for older children who are already writing just to continue with that practice and it's fun too. So those are just some overview skills that you are actually using kind of in the occupational therapy world, right? The original way for this game to be played, from what I understand, and I could be completely wrong, is that you'd have two players and you could pop any amount of bubbles in one row that you wanted to. So I'd say I'm going to do these two. Then the next person goes and then the next person, maybe I'll do three over here. The next person goes, they do the one over here. I don't know if you can tell they're being popped in or not. The goal is to not be the last person to pop a bubble. So there's a lot of strategy involved. So that's a really simple, easy way to play this as a game. What I think would be great with this hundred board here, because we got the 10 by 10, which makes it a hundred board, is to use it for math. So the first way to use it for math is just simply counting as you push the little buttons. And depending on which size you get, like if you've got these smaller size, you can still use them, but you just know that you're limited to the number. So I know there's a hundred here, so it's great for counting a hundred and you just call it out as you pop. One, two, three, four, five, all the way across until you get down to the bottom, the hundred. You can also use it for skip counting. Two, four, six, 
eight and you're just pushing two at a time. You can do it by counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, because you're counting by the rows. If you have a rainbow one like I do and you have a child that's learning their colors, you can call out a color and have them push that certain color. So maybe you say, pop a purple one, pop a yellow one. In that case, you would definitely need the rainbow one. You can also do your sequencing and pattern making on here as well. If you had like a pom-pom or something to put on there, that would work really well. You can get a die and you can roll it and whatever you roll can be how many you push for counting, one, two, three, four. And then for multiplication, you can do math arrays. And a math array is what we use on a Montessori 100 board, essentially. I'm gonna take out my multiplication flashcards here. You can get these at the dollar store. You can even make your own. So I have four times four on this card. So that means I need to go four across, one, two, three, four and four down, one, two, three, four. I can pop all those other bubbles to make my math array and I can count them to find my answer. So this is demonstrating visually four, times four, and then I can count those to know the answer. So that's great for multiplication. You can even do more advanced math on this as well. You can learn about area or perimeter. You can use different sizes of these to find the different areas and perimeters of each one. So you can get really creative. I did find another use for these, which I thought was really, really clever, and that's using them for language art. So I have some flashcards here, uh, some visual cues. You can do this in written form or in visual cues if you have pictures. So for instance, you could lay out the pictures here and have them each row represent a picture. So this one's cake. How many syllables does cake have? One. And then you can have a key where they can check all of their answers after they've done a whole board. Or if you want it in written form, you can have your own paper. I'm just using a dry erase here for sake of example, right? And so each one is a row, each word. So they would start in row one, purple. How many syllables? Purple. Alphabet. Alphabet bet three, you can have a key or a piece of paper that has the answer so they can just self check their own syllable counts. Now most of what I've shown you is on this 100 one because I think it's really, really versatile, but I want to show you some other options that are out there besides this one. And you can find Poppet boards that already have the pre-printed letters and numbers on them. This was actually a set, they came together. So I think that's fabulous. This one has the numbers, this one has the, excuse me, this one has the letters and this one has the numbers. The only thing I do not like is that I could not find this pre-printed in lowercase. So that was kind of sad to see. You can alternatively, write your own with a sharpie. I've seen lots of people write their own letters on these on Instagram and sharpie. You can write it on this one if you prefer to have that as an option but just wanted to let you know that you can get them pre-printed on here and I think that's actually really excellent and I like that they had the number ones to go along with that. This one is really good if you have a beginner learner learning their letters or learning their numbers so you can do some great call outs. Find the P, show me the P, find the R, show me the R, find number 14 if you wish. You can do it if you're learning the sequence of the alphabet, A, B, C, and push as you go along the whole alphabet and doing it. Same thing with the numbers, very, very versatile. A little bit of matching if you had some number flashcards, you can put those up or even letter flashcards for that matter and say, find the two. So you got to find the two, the 10, match the <laughs> match the 10. And you can do it that way for some number recognition. So this way you're matching the symbol, the symbols together, or you could use it for counting. So here I have one that has the quantity on it. So now your learner has to count the quantity. This one is 13. So once I've counted the pictures, I can go and find the number 13 and punch that out. Or if you wanna get extra and you're learning the number name, here's 17 on a flashcard, you'd have to find the 17 here. Where do you get these? I am not sure you guys, <laughs> don't hate me for that, but you can certainly make flashcards. You can buy flashcards, you can print them out on the computer that have the number symbol or the number quantity or even the number name label. I've also seen flashcards like these. These are from um, Target Dollar Spot a long time ago and then they have the number quantity in that form and then on the other side they have the um, symbol on it. So if you can't find these, what you know what, I'll try to find some and link them down below too, because I know a lot of you are going to want to be able just to get them and have them done, but you can certainly make these on your own. And you can do the same thing for the letters too. So finding the lowercase, you can do a lowercase flashcard to match it with the uppercase one. You can do it uppercase to uppercase. You can have it on a flashcard and try and find the first letter if you wanted to. There's just so many different ways you can do it. So I think these are very, very versatile, especially if you're just starting out. I was so excited to see these. Now the case is mine from the dollar store, but you're gonna love them. 
look, we have numbers. These are so, so fun. We have the numbers one through nine here. And I mean, these would be awesome. So what I was thinking about these, these would be great for sensory bins, especially if you are learning your numbers. So you can put these in sensory bins because they're so fun to manipulate and to play around with. You can fill them with some rice and dump them out. You can pop the bubbles in and out. And so these are great for number recognition and they're a fabulous size. I mean, look at these. These are absolutely great for those small hands to hold and they are so fun. So several things that you can do with these that I want to suggest is that you can use all of those same flashcards for matching that we just showed you or for counting and you can assign, you know, the card to them. Those are totally work. So you can take all those same things and apply them to here. But what you can also do with this one is you can do some sequencing. So you can go ahead and put them in order of the way they're supposed to go, you know, like this, <laughs> kind of like that. There we go. Or you can take out a number. Maybe I take out this one and you can provide your child a couple of options and say, which number is missing? And then they'd have to pick one from one of these that you've given them to fill in the missing number. It's this one. You can scramble them up if you want and say, can you put the numbers back in the correct sequence in the correct order, right? So you have some options with these. And like I said, these would be fabulous in sensory bins. Like I, I think they are amazing. These also come in different colors. I got the purple because you know, purple, <laughs> we like the purple. So really, really do like these. You can use them also with your number board over here, right? So you can say, okay, show me the number one. There's the one. Okay, how about you show me 27? And they got the 27, right? So I like that you can use these all together. You can use them separately. And I just think they're absolutely adorable. These are amazing for sensory bins. So definitely gonna be putting these down below for you guys because I know a lot of you are gonna be loving loving these. I also thought these would be fun for tracing too, tracing around them with some pens for that um, number shape. They're just, they're just great. So really adore, adore, adore those. This one really intrigued me too. So I went ahead and bought it so I can check it out for you guys. This one is a keyboard. <laughs> it looks just like a keyboard, it has all the same placement as a normal computer keyboard would have. I thought this was a great um, option too. It does have all of the symbols and numbers on here printed already and it has the extra extra keys that a computer keyboard would have. But one, I thought it'd be fun for imaginative play. If you wanted to have a keyboard that kids feel like they're actually pushing something, you can use that same thing for finding letters or finding numbers. And you can practice keyboard hand placement if you're into keyboarding. My girls were learning how to type last year, especially important when you were doing all those Zoom calls and online stuff of knowing where all those letters are because these are obviously not in alphabetical order. And so they need to know where all the letters are. So you can do a find the, D, find the D, find the eye and hunting and looking for those letters so they know the placement for when they are doing all that crazy online stuff. I also think these would be great for um, sight words or even CVC words, just words that don't have repetitive letters in them because you only get to push it down once, right? So if I had this up here and we're learning our sight words, we can go A, N, D. Once again, my pet peeve is that these are all uppercase. They're not lowercase. So that's the only downfall. So this is a lowercase. So that's the only thing I don't like. And then you can punch them back out and do the next word, he. H E. And so you have some reinforcement with those sight words or spelling words for that matter. That'd be a lot of fun. And then I think one of my favorite things that you can do with this is you can have one person punch the letters. You could also do this with um, this one up here, but you can have somebody punch a mystery word, right? And let me try and then present it to the next person. You can grab like a piece of paper or I have a dry erase board here. The person would say, okay, so we punched in are pushed in T I G H L. And so now it's this person's turn to unscramble the word. So I know what the word is because I did it, but the person would have to figure out. So this is more advanced. So if you have an older child who can do this, they can unscramble the word and play a game like that. So I thought that would be a lot of fun to do with a keyboard here. But I have another one to show you. This is called the chess board and this is for a two player game. So I wanted to show you this just as an option because a lot of the activities I've shown you, you can do with this 
this board and then you can also play this with the games. This one actually comes with dice and one person would be on each side of the board. So this is very similar to the game that I showed you with this one earlier, how you push them in and you don't want to be the last. This time you want to be the first to fill in all of your bubbles. So then you would roll and you would each take turns. So you can do this with one die or you can do it with two. I like it with two because what are you doing? You're doing simple addition. So you're adding the five plus the four for your total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I hit nine here. And then when you win a round, you can mark your bubble that you won the round. This is great math exercises. If you wanted to, you can make it multiplication or you can make it subtraction if you wanted to do a different math skill just with these same two. So you get to decide as, <laughs> as the educator or the parent um, working on this with your kids of how you want to do it. And they come in so many different colors. Many of the other activities I've shown you can still be used on this one too if you just wanted to invest in one. This, I got more, you guys. There's more. For logic and critical thinking, they even make them in a tangram form. How cool is this, you guys? So these come in different shapes and you can use them just like you would any tangrams. I mean, you have different ones in here. But what's cool about this one, this one actually in their little pamphlet, which is why I kept it, they have some samples of different shapes that you can make in a shadow form. So you can try and make it on your own like a game. And then it shows you with the pieces, like the answer key on how to make it. So you can use these to make all kinds of different shapes and use artistic side to make new shapes, houses and animals. And now if I were you and I was getting this and I had a younger child who wasn't quite ready for tangrams yet, I would get a second set and I would use it for shape matching. So matching these shapes. So I take them all out and take the second set all out too and put them all together and have my child match the like shapes and the like colors together. Um, and then you can even do more pictures with them that way. If you have other ideas and suggestions for this one, I would love to hear what you have to say, but I think this is a lot of fun. And since these are pretty much made for sensory play as well, I wanted to make sure I showed you these. These are poppet bracelets. And so they just fit on a child's wrist and you can give it to them and they can actually wear it and they can just pop wherever they want because it's on the bracelet. These also come in so many different styles too. Another portable travel option are these keychains. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And this one's just for fun. If you have a child that's really into these and you want to provide them with a different way to play, we have this little board here, which is basically like a Tetris board. So there's different shapes of each one and you have to fit them together to fit onto this board all the way. So a lot of critical thinking and logic skills and putting them out and then you can also play with them and pretty much build with them and build some things outside of using this board very similar to using it like the tangrams too you can make different things with them so it kind of builds upon that the box actually talks about two different games that you can play actually three different games that you can play with this set so you can keep that in mind for something different i just wanted to make sure i showed you that this does exist and it's really nice too because it comes with the tray and the tray actually has a grid on it so there's like a little grid here i want to know your great ideas on poppets too so make sure to leave me a comment down below because i would love to hear what you like to do with your poppets and your kids I I also have a video I'm gonna put up here on screen that you can check out. It's my fidget video with some of my fidget favorites. I think you're gonna really like that one if you haven't seen it already. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.